let us pray. Almighty Father, we worship and reference you. You are the only God and the holy God. Blessed be your holy name. Father, we thank you for bringing us to this Monday Bible teaching prayer. Please teach us and train us to love Father, to know your word, and to use your word, applying it through prayer, and so that our life will be heavenly. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to this Monday Bible teaching prayer. Let's open our Bible to Judges chapter 9, verse 5. Please open the Bible. Let's see together. It's the perfect law of liberty so that we'll be enlightened in the mind and we shall not remain the same again. Judges chapter 9, verse 5. And he went unto his father's house at Ophrah and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubal, being three score and ten persons, upon one stone, notwithstanding, yet Jotam, the youngest son of Jerubal, was left for it himself. Hallelujah. The topic today is error of hero. Heroes in life commit error. We are learning from Abimelech today as the first point of stop. He actually took all the son of his father and slew them. Gideon had 70. Gideon had children. He slaughtered 70 out of them. But Jotan escaped for the purpose. But right now, how can you, because of ulterior motive, because of personal ambition, slaughtering, kill 70 people. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill. But this man took it upon himself to kill these people, to slaughter them, not even looking unto God. What shall I do? I don't know our life, how we are destroying souls, how we are stamping on people, how we are economically killing and destroying people's lives. How we are making people to be under because of our ambition. As a Christian, because of the ministry, maybe you are killing people. You are making them to be under because of your personal ambition. Check your life so that you will not be committing error of an hero. So we are looking at three points today. One, Abimele committed deadly mistake. Number two, Abraham Concede to defilement by a maid. Number three, Absalom, a cause to David, a male factor. Let's start from point number one. Abimelech committed deadly mistake. So many mistakes in the Bible, but we picked on Abimelech, Abraham, and David who committed deadly errors. Now, let's start from the first one. That is Abimelech committed deadly mistake. Let's see. Judges chapter 9, verse 5 again. And he went unto his father's house at Ophrah. I think we'll go and visit them and pray for them and enlighten them and show love and slew. Oh my goodness. His brethren, the sons of Jerubal, being three score and ten persons, upon one stool, notwithstanding yet, Jotam, the youngest son of uh, Jerubal, Gideon, was left. For he eat himself. I pray because of self ambition, because of our own opinion, because of fear, because of anything in life, we will not be destroying and killing people with our lifestyle, with our approach, with our corny way, with lack of justice and righteousness. We will not destroy life. People in the ministry, I had they do that. They destroy others, they pull other people down to climb up. Look at it. What's the difference between? That's an error. To be destroying other, to be disdaining other, to be dishonoring people and saying you want to have your way. That's not good. But look at it. He has repercussion because what a man sow is going to, going to reap it. Look at verse 53 to 57. That is Judges chapter 9, 53 to 57. And a certain woman cast a piece of my stool upon Abimelech's head and all to break his call. Can you see the end of this man? He died. 
So check your life. There it is appointed unto man who wants to die after this judgment. Where will this man spend eternity? Abimelech, who kill people, who slaughter people, and he rose to position, and he become the, the head, and he was conquering, conquering, but one day, what Jotham said actually came to pass. He was rewarded of his evil. What evil are you doing? What unrighteousness is going on in your life? Check it. What a man saw is going to reap. Abimelech, he did exploit, but in the wrong way, in the wrong direction. In your ministry, in your family, maybe you are even oppressing your wife, oppressing your husband, supplanting people in your business, in your way, in your route to success in life. You know how, how wrong you took, what you, what you did along the way, the line, the deception, the errors. Today, Jesus is calling you for a change so that you will not go to hell. Point number two, Abraham concede to defilement by maid. Open to Genesis and let's see together the word of God in Genesis. Genesis chapter 16, verse 3. And Sarah, Abraham's wife, took a girl and made the Egyptian. After Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband and, and Abraham to be his wife. Verse 4. And he went into unto Agar and she conceived. She, be, she saw that she had conceived a mistress would despise in her eyes. Can you see what a conspiracy of adultery, of fornication, of evil, and of going without leaning on God can cause in the family? Now, the family is at this age. The trust left. Confidence left. Strife started. Look at it. Now, see, envy started. Jealousy. The family, now, uh, a guy that has been planted in that family to destroy the goal of God in that family eventually came on and he took over that family. He took over, the love was slashed. The love for Sarah, the love of God in that family broke. I pray you will not allow it. Abraham could not endure again. Abraham listened, just like Adam listened to Eve, he listened to Sarah. I pray, will not allow the, the sweet tonguing of the word of a wife, of anybody, of a business partner, to be able to make us to commit deadly, deadly error in the mighty name of Jesus. Of course, Abraham, deadly error. Look at what he produced, the white man to the world that is actually killing and destroying everybody. Because this root of Ishmael, Agar from Egypt, the Arabians, is not the best. And that one became the Antichrist became the, the one that actually gave birth to the so-called, those so-called um, Arabian that destroying and defiling the world today. Think about that. Abraham conceived to defilement by mid. When you have a see-through defilement, you don't know what can happen. When you actually allow defilement, unrighteousness, when you do not listen to God enough, it can cause havoc in the family. Even in the whole world entirely, that evil you're doing, the secret sin, the prostitute you are visiting, the exchange of so-called lust you call love on your telephone, on your Facebook, even that the, you are doing, that according you are going to have a child, you want a child, and you are going to that um, white garment place, you are going to carry that bottle that they call anointing, and you are carrying that water and catch it that is not of the Lord. And somebody is praying and say, comes in seven days, and praying and fasting for you, they can destroy your life. Destroy your generation. Destroy the generation. I pray today a change come to your life. In every area that you are actually laying your hand upon mistake. Because the Bible calls what us to come. If you make mistake, you can come. Is able to abundantly pardon. It's not wicked. His hand is not short. Look at what the Bible says, so that we can look at it as we learn, as we are going to learn from the, the from David. God wants us open to fifty nine Isaiah fifty nine. Let's see it together, so that today, if you have committed any error, you can call upon the Lord. He will answer you. He's a faithful God. He's actually ready. Now, look at uh, Isaiah chapter 55, 6. Seek ye the Lord, why he may be found. Call upon him, why he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the righteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and our God, 
and, and to our God, for we abundantly pardon. Come to him today. If you have gone into any error, whatsoever mistake, call to him. He will amend, amend your ways. He will actually make your way to be prosperous. Spiritually, you will not drown in hell. Look at 59 verse 1. Behold, the, all, behold the Lord's hand is not shutting that he cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that will not hear. For your hands are defied, defilement of Abraham, defilement with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongues have muttered uh, perverseness. No calling for justice, none any plead for truth. They trust in vanity. Vanity, I will get this, I want this at all costs. And speak lies. They conceive me chief and bring forth iniquity. They add conquerors, eggs, and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their egg died, that which is crushed, breaketh out the vipers. Today, he's calling you, his hand is not short to receive, nor his ear heavy to ear. That iniquity take it away, and God is going to take care of you in Jesus' name. Point number three, we are going to learn. We have seen here, Abraham made a mistake. Of course, mistake can come. Error can come. How do you face it? What do you do? You hide sin upon sin. Let's learn from Abraham. Point number three, Absalom, a cause to David, a male factor. Second, the word of God, second uh, Samuel, let's look at it together. In the, as the Lord is teaching us, training us, and encouraging us not to remain in sin and righteousness, not to even fall into a righteousness at all. No error in our life. Because when you put your hand into the plow and you look back, it's dangerous. You might not be worthy of the kingdom. The ply man, continue to plow. Don't look bad. Don't let anybody tell you that the instrument of Jesus given to you to plow is bad and you should change it. Don't change it. Look at it in the uh, um, point, number, the point number three, Ab Ab Absalom, a cause to uh, David a make factor. Second Samuel chapter 12, 10 to, 10 to 12. And when they told David, saying, Uriah went not down into his house. David said unto Uriah, Comest thou not from thy journey? When, why then, why then did thou not go down to thy house? That is 11, Psalm 11, 10. You can see what happened. He forced this man after he slept with the wife to want to, to want to lure him and deceive him. That's what happened when you commit error. You add error into error. Today, confess. Don't add error into error. Look at what he now did. Eventually, he killed the man. But let's go to chapter 12, verse 10 to 12. And now, therefore, the sword shall not depart from. Look at the consequence of sinning. Adding error into error instead of confessing. Today, any mistake you make, don't you can't cover it. There's nothing that a man do that will not be known. Or, or the, the Bible says what is done under the roof will be made known on top of the roof. You can't hide. Don't hide sin. Don't cover sin. Look at it in verse 10 again. So that is um, so, uh, Second Samuel chapter 12, 10 on to 10 or 2. Now therefore the sword shall not depart from thy house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house. I will take thy wives before thy eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun. Can you see that evil that will befall David? But what did he do? I don't want us to waste time. This man knew. This man recognized that with sin in his hand, nowhere to go. So look at what he says. When he recognized his reference, he said in, verse, in Psalm 51, verse 3, verse 3, he said, For I have acknowledged my transgression. This is what you need to do. Anything you have done, I have acknowledged my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Now, I've tried my best to cover it up. It won't go. I kill people. I cover up, I even uh, use um, bribery for some people, I lie, I deceive people, but now it's not covered. So now I recognize, um, I, I've acknowledged my transgression. You need to acknowledge your sin, your secret sin. Bring it out now. Don't, don't I, yes, you. I don't hide it. And he said, and my sin is ever before me. Where do I go? Nothing can be hidden. God knows everything. God sees everything. Even if nobody knows, <laughs> Joab knows. You have without trouble you. But look at what now happened in verse 12. He said, 
Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Do you want to get your salvation back? 